Hi, Rose Theodora. Hello. I'm so excited that you have um, made the time to uh, meet with me on my conversations blog and discuss everything that's going on um, in the world and how it relates to how astrology can relate to wellness and beauty. So I think that's going to be our topic for today. And just a little bit of background on Rose, you are a celebrated astrologer and spiritual counselor and curator, and you have a background in neuroscience and um, an art history degree from UCLA, correct? Correct. Correct. Yep. Excellent. So um, with that being said, can you just give myself and uh, my guests at Organics a little bit of a background on... Um, what drew you into astrology and, and how you were inspired to make this your lifelong um, passion and work? Yes. So um, it started in school, probably even before that, I was always studying astrology and reading books and reading for people. And I really wanted to do something practical in school, mainly because my grandparents were so influential in my life and they're doctors. And so I thought, I have to do something practical. I have to do something that will guarantee me, you know, a good life. And so I started to take science courses in college and just loved it. And I was obsessed. And I thought, okay, how can I help people? Like, what kind of doctor do I want to be? Well, a psychiatrist seems most uh, meaningful to me because then I can work with people and help people. And so this is my trajectory. I was going to become a doctor and help people. And there was this part of me yearning, like that artist part of me. And I yeah. thought, I just have to, I have to double major. I have to do both. And in this process of, of formal education, I was so bored. I was like, this is just, and my grandfather kept telling me, you don't want to be a doctor. You're a doctor. You're like, you have to give your whole life away and you have to just do so much before even becoming a doctor. And then mm -hmm. what? are you working for someone else? Will you work for yourself? What does that look like? How mm -hmm. long is your residency? And so while studying art history too, I became obsessed with the colors the artists would use. And I started to think about their astrological makeup because this was my obsession, but I wasn't considering it for a career. So I would look at the artist's astrological sign, their chart, the socioeconomic climate that they created art in, and just became obsessed with aesthetics and why they were happening and the healing effects and the psychological reasoning behind why we create with color, why we choose certain aesthetic things like sound, color, whatever our mediums are. Mm. And I think we all have a medium, whether we're an artist or not, you work with beauty products or mm -hmm. Reiki or whatever we are working with, we have a medium, whether you're cooking at home for your children, like all of us choose, we have a palette. So whether it's taste or scent, we are all drawn to something. And I kept finding these correlations between one's astrological makeup and their sign and what choices they make. And so after graduating and really working in the art world and starting on that path, it was not fulfilling. And wherever I would work or whatever I would do, I was reading people's charts. And whether that was the client or um, you know the gallery owner or the auction, I was just always reading for people. So you're always getting really drawn and pulled into what you're really, what your really heart wanted to be doing. Yeah always it was there all the time. And I just wasn't, I'm, I, there's a part of me that is so logical that I wasn't considering it for a profession. And, who, and, and the way in which I associated astrology wasn't the, the kind of look that I wanted. It just didn't fit, you know, with what I knew. And here I was doing it all the time. And I thought, this is so healing for people. And if we can personalize our choices because for example if you are driving or going to the supermarket there's so many advertisements and colors constantly bombarding you and we're not aware of it it's all subconscious it's like triggering you to buy something or to feel a certain way and if you can actually understand what your preferences are and why you're triggered by certain colors some of us will have a very healthy relationship with red and others of us will get 
very provoked and feel angry or nervous or traumatized, you know, or, right. So we all have this really different relationship. And it wasn't until I decided to commit to astrology as a profession when it was so evident to me, when people were like shoving money at me to read their charts mm -hmm. that I said, okay, I have to look at this. So um, I guess my first question is then, so you started doing it as a profession, um, but is there a kind of a myth you always have to bust for people? Because some people can take astrology more as like the commercial side of it is right. all, you know, the books you see in the bookstore and there's this whole commercial side of it that doesn't really talk about the science behind it and how it's been around for thousands of years mm -hmm. and how there is a truth in that. Um, and uh, there's a lot of people who think it's, oh, it's just a hoax. It's woo woo. It's not real, but the truth is it is very real. Yeah. Um, and it's, like I said, it's been around for thousands of years. So maybe you could just start about that myth that you have to kind of maybe explain why it's real and how it really does apply. Um, because you did my reading and it made me understand, oh, well, this makes sense. This is, this is actually very logical and it's, it's not um, anything poofy or fluffy that you see right. in all of these books that you can you know, buy um, that whole commercial side that um, I kind of think doesn't really do it really it justice, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe you can um, just start there like a, briefly to explain why it does really um, make work. sense and, why, and work, yeah. Right, well, I think the myth today is it's highly misunderstood and there's a reason for that. Um, in, during its history, its ancient history, it did you know, move across the world and it was translated by different languages. By the time it came to the United States, wasn't really until the 19th century, until the 1930s. And the people who kind of had the resurgence, they were responsible for reviving astrology, were um, one guy's name is Alan Leo, and he really wanted to make astrology mainstream because it had been separated from the scientific community because science, you know, during the, the scientific revolution, people really wanted to validate science and they didn't want anything that would tarnish it or, um, or take away from the authenticity. So it split at that time. And there, this guy, Alan Leo really wanted to make astrology accessible to people using sun sign astrology. And he just focused on that because everyone knows their sun sign. Mm. And then astrology started to get some of Carl Jung and his synchronicity theory and his archetypal theory. And it, it makes its way into the psychological uh, realm. And it becomes this very watered down. It actually separates from its ancient roots quite a bit. There's no predictive astrology in the traditional sense. There's no more associating with herbs and metals and the alchemic properties that its ancient roots once had. It becomes now just completely watered down in the 1960s and 70s as a psychological explanation for why you'll feel a certain way. Right. And it becomes so dumbed down and separated from anything aesthetic or anything um, related to fate. And then even the way it's surviving now, people are so terrified about the word fate. It's like we want to feel that we have free will and we really want to feel that we're empowered and that whatever whatever we want to make out of our lives can happen and while that more control per se right exactly mm. yeah and while that's true why that's a beautiful concept it makes you question things like god and um and what level of free will do we actually have and this idea about fate it's like for me, what I've seen repeatedly with my practice, and I've read thousands of charts. I don't even know how many thousands at this point. I've been reading them all of my life. And I've seen repeatedly people's, um, you, you can predict what's happened in their life and what will happen, specific events, um, whether they're encountering someone or an event happens. And it makes you question fate and what fate really means because there's something reassuring about thinking that the universe is so divinely organized you know in a way we can't even comprehend my grandfather who was a scientist 
even said, like science is only proven until it's not. And exactly. <laughs> And I think the same with the universe. Like we're only just beginning to understand stuff. We don't understand black holes. We don't even know what that matter is, what dark matter is. And it's a huge percent of the universe. So to say that people don't believe in astrology, I don't think astrology is a belief. I think that it's existed for a long time because it's valid and relevant. And if you really understand it and the deeper you go with the practice and the history, you really start to realize that there's something to it rather than reading your horoscope or reading a meme and, and people don't even read their horoscopes in the correct way because they're not taught. Right. Well, that's the commercial side of it really. Right. Um, it's kind of just fluff right. when there's actually so much more depth to it. Mm -hmm. So, um, What's going on right now? You talked about briefly before we started about retrograde. And so maybe yeah. we can discuss like what's happening um, in the world and universe now and how that is affecting um, people and whatever their sun sign is. And we're going to start there. Yes, I love that. So if you look at collective trends, whether it is, um, you know, clean eating or you look at now how people are becoming more conscious about cruelty-free beauty products and wellness, there's a reason for that. And if you look at, I always go with aesthetic trends because it's easier to follow, like fashion trends or movie trends or music. Right. This is reflected in the planetary alignments. And in 1982, there was a big planetary alignment that had to do with the collective and it had to do with relationship dynamics. And since 1982, the divorce rates have really skyrocketed. And we've seen things like gay marriage and just so many different themes related to relationships or broken homes or relationship therapy, or there's even that thing called like conscious uncoupling, right? <laughs> have you heard mm -hmm. that? Yeah, very popular. <laughs> right. So all of these trends really started related to relationships, I think since 1982. And on January 12th of this year, we had another major aspect come into alignment that was the same. So that cycle in 1982 between the planets, Pluto and Saturn. So Pluto is a planet way out there and Pluto represents in astrology something out of our control. It's where we have to find empowerment often through disempowerment. And... Mm. It's, you know, if you think about like how life is broken down into facets, there's one way that we think in life. There's a way that we uh, have an, our emotions. There's a way that we love. And so this planet Saturn or Saturn is about how we build our life. Mm -hmm. And it's the structures in our life. And so when these two planets, this planet of disempowerment, Pluto, and Saturn structure and form and... Um, really solidifying our life come together, there's going to be a huge change collectively, like some kind of crises that shifts things. And this is what happened with the pandemic. Right. These, these two planets on January 12th came together. And the pandemic started before that, but on January 12th, everything really came together. And that's when we started to see it just kind of like take off and skyrocket. And then one thing to always keep in mind with astrology is that all the planets are working together and they well, work. that's science i mean that's a right. reality right right and we people forget that we're not exempt from what's happening in the cosmos because we're bound by gravity and uh, a thing called magnetic resonance with the planets so anytime the planets are aligning we are having this whether it's a small realization or whether it's an event in our lives, we are, we're moving in synchronicity with these planets and we're a part of them. So this happened on July 12th, this coming together of the planets that started the pandemic. And now um, the planets are getting ready to go retrograde. And four of them will be retrograde this month. And what retrogrades really mean is that the planet is moving in its direction. It doesn't go backwards. It starts mm -hmm. to go uh, clockwise rather than counterclockwise. Okay. 
And what that means for us, there are some people born with retrograde planets, but all retrograde means is that we on earth are passing another planet. And so it's going to slow down and our relationship with that planet is going to be felt. And when that happens, the world around us seems to slow down even more. And so you, you might think, okay, the pandemic, we're already slowed down. We're already isolated. There's not much happening, but it's a time of revision. Anytime there is a retrograde, it's a time to go back. Mm. And so the planet Pluto went retrograde and Saturn went retrograde. So we're going to be revisiting and thinking about the pandemic. You know, how did we handle it? How did we, handle it related to um, the doctors and nurses? How did we handle it as a government? How did we handle it financially? So that will be happening on a collective level. And on a personal level, the planet Venus is going to go retrograde on May 13th. And so what does that mean? <laughs> yeah. So Venus is related to love. And love is in harmony because when we feel harmonious in our life, we feel loved and we feel like we have the ability to love another person and to receive love. But more importantly, and especially for our talk today, Venus is about beauty and it's about how you feel beautiful and it's how you care for yourself and how you need to care for yourself. Very interesting. And it's very um, relevant, I think, to... Um, the beauty world because ironically or not ironically, I don't know, um, indie beauty and clean beauty, it's been around now for a while. And obviously over the past four years since I opened my store, it's really um, skyrocketed and become much more um, focused and there's lots, lots more um, information about it and it's just featured more and highlighted. It's still not mainstream like conventional beauty, but there's definitely much more awareness about it. So what I found recently is the word safe. That word safe now is being applied to clean beauty because it's making people feel safe feel safe that they're not putting toxins on their skins. They want to feel safe in the climate that's happening around us, right? Building your immune system, making it stronger so that you can resist um, a body, your body breaking down if you do get the virus, um, and then also making your body strong to resist the virus. So it's now coming into play in the beauty world that if you are using clean beauty, that just adds already to um, the fact that you're trying to take care of your body because what you put on your skin um, it gets into your into your body and what you put on it is just as important I always say is what you put in your body so right. um, being safe now is part of using clean beauty so continue then what you're saying oh, that's <laughs> interesting too do you notice the word protection used a lot more or is that old would you say the word safety and protection are? Well, are I definitely am, I'm definitely seeing the word safe now being used with clean beauty. And I like that word a lot. I like it better than non-toxic. Right. <laughs> um, I don't like the word non-toxic. I think it's really harsh and scary. I think safe is more comforting and um, practical as well. Yeah. Um, and protective and protection to me, um, the word protection, I think, has always been part of my vocabulary because when I talk about different brands um, and what their ingredients are, a lot of the ingredients are protecting the skin from the environment, protecting the skin from free radicals, from UV, from um, you know damage that can be done to the skin from the elements. So I've always used the word protection, um, but definitely both words, safe and protection, are really now part of the vocabulary for, for beauty. And I think it's important. Um, and I think it's really great that people are understanding it more now. That's beautiful too. Even related to Venus, Venus being about harmony and you need to feel uh, safe in order to feel harmonious. There's such a link there. Yeah, so absolutely. And I just feel from my own personal experience and um, also working with all the customers that I have that when they start using clean, um, natural, organic products, 
they don't want to go back to the conventional side. I don't. I can't. You can't because you are experiencing the benefits and you're experiencing how these products are actually um, made with such pure ingredients that they're really healing the skin and nourishing the skin and protecting it. And when you start experiencing that, you don't want to go back to something that um, contains fillers and just stuff that's doing nothing, but just on the surface, maybe making it feel to the touch nice, but not really penetrating deeply enough to do any source of um, rejuvenation or cellular renewal or uh, nourishment to the skin. Right. Right. That it's interesting also because you started your store four years ago and you're a Virgo, your sun mm -hmm. sign is Virgo. And five years ago, four, yeah, four and a half, five years ago, Jupiter, which is the planet related to growth and expansion and wisdom was in the sign of Virgo. And mm. what that means, I mean, this is when, would you say that that's when healthcare or what, that's when beauty became so clean at that point when you opened your store? I think I opened my store in 2016 and I think in 2014 um, the my type of store had already started to spring you know in the market um, come up in the market yeah. maybe as early as 2013 I obviously was not the first business doing what I'm doing but I think that um, indie beauty brands started to really, I guess, gain traction and stores, clean beauty stores like myself started to really come into the market around 2013, 2014. Um, and then from there, just when I started in 2016, I have really seen it just expand tremendously. Right. Yeah. Because people in 2016 where, you know, I'm located in Westport, so it's outside an urban area. People were not familiar with a lot of the brands that I was carrying, um, but you know I was pretty much ahead of the curve in the area that I was in. But I knew that it was coming. I could see that it was coming. I could see that it was already had been working in urban areas. So it was just a matter of time that people who didn't live in an urban area would want the same thing. So right. I could, yeah, definitely see that happening. This is just a note for people watching too, because as you're speaking about this, I'm thinking of the importance of our sun sign, not, not to simplify it, but if you think of astrology just in terms of purpose and in terms of intelligence, whatever sun sign you are born under does give you that sensitivity to that particular area of life and you being a Virgo, you would be already predisposed predisp excuse me, predisposition. Predisposed. <laughs> yes, predisposed. Thank you for beauty and clean beauty and eating well and clean eating and just really purifying the body. And that is something that you would be born with. And if you look at your life or any Virgo would have ex ex expressed this in a different way. And for example, Libras would be so concerned with balance or beauty or beauty of the mind or beautifying their world or their environment in some way. So this is on the very surface level and then it gets so mm. deep. But even thinking about that in terms of just what your intelligence and purpose is. Yeah. So it's almost like it's not by chance, like people no. might think it would be, you know, you are who you are, but a lot of it, as you're explaining, comes down to, um, you know, how the science of astrology has affects affects your makeup and affects your choices correct right it, yeah yeah so um i guess my next question would be that um understanding like all of this and understanding if someone comes to you for a reading um you know or spiritual counseling how does I guess, knowing what their sun sign is, how do you use that information? How would one use that information to kind of navigate their life going forward? Right. Um, sun sign is one part of it. If you know nothing, and that's why I mentioned sun sign now, it will tell you the area of your life that you're consciously aware of, that you can relate to as your sun sign. 
But if someone's coming to me for a reading or spiritual counseling, I'm going to look at the relationships that that person has with the arrangement of the planets when they were born. And so they can go deeper yeah. into understanding um, more than just their sun sign. Obviously they can go deeper into understanding how you're saying like how their, um, their like cosmic roadmap of life. Exactly. A blueprint, a roadmap of life. Absolutely. And it, it will tell them things like, or tell me things about how a person needs to take action in their life or what is considered wellness for a particular individual, whether it's sleeping patterns or dietary stuff or whatever they are predisposed to health wise, um, mm. which you can see. And also timing of events in life um, and areas of focus for a person. Like some of us are very focused on career and it flows naturally. Whereas others of us are very focused on career, but we have a really hard time with it. There's a reason for that. And so you can see things like blocks, gifts for a person, um, purpose for a person. Like you can pretty much follow your passion and it will lead you to where you're supposed to be. But our passion isn't always like sometimes we, we it's bigger than that and we can't we cannot uh, fully grasp what our purpose is, right? Like you're working with beauty and you're helping people and you're educating people and you're bringing a level of quality to their life, but you'd never just sum up your life as being like a beauty care store owner, you know, or something right. like that. Like it's bigger than that. And so what we do has, it's all about context. And so what we do in life is, pretty much laid out in the chart and how we can live a fulfilling life and bring harmony to our lives and feel whole as well as extend that to other people. And when you're in harmony with your own life and you're comfortable, then you really give a lot to other people and they can feel it when they come into contact with you. Yeah, there's definitely um, an energy that you mm -hmm. give off when you are feeling in harmony, right? And um, really in tune with your life. But during this time now where things, like you said, we're in, coming into this retrograde, things are slowing down, pace is slowing down, we're becoming more reflective. How would um, someone like work on becoming more harmonious in their life? Right, so that's a great question too, because Venus is going to, when a planet goes retrograde, especially like Venus, you are, will feel like our life is not harmonious at all. And people might attribute it to the pandemic. Like, of course, life isn't harmonious right now, right? Right. Like, That's the like, reason, right? <laughs> yeah, right. So it's like outside of themselves or something so logical. Um, or people might think, well, I'm confined with my children and, and my significant other. Of course, we're having a hard time. Not necessarily. Um, Venus going retrograde is going to get you to examine these facets of your life, like how you, what you value. Fundamentally, what you value is, is in question right now. And it is going to become way more in question from May 13th until the end of June. And so everyone is going to be thinking about what is not in harmony so that they can make it more harmonious. And this is the time to do that. How do we want to make ourselves feel beautiful, even at home? You know, do we stay in our pajamas all day or do we want to? You know, make beautiful it? also, um, as you know very well, it's also on the inside too, right? It's not just the exterior. I think solely on the inside, truly. Yeah. I think if you are feeling aligned and beautiful within and you're respecting yourself, and I think that's what life should be really about is respecting yourself and making good choices, making helpful choices then you're going to glow and you're going to look so beautiful because you feel beautiful and other people will be so attracted to you. So right. I, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Well, in astrology too, even in relationship, like people aren't, you can never see the way someone looks, but you can see the beauty of their soul. And especially when I compare two charts for relationships, like two people come to me and, and I'm looking at why they're attracted to one another. It's not based on looks. It's based on, magnetism or attraction or friction you know energy energy yeah right yeah. so um what sun sign are we in now we are in taurus and today specifically i love the how you said that too and 
there's a full moon today. So the moon is in Scorpio. And whenever there's a full moon, it just means the sun is over here in one sign and the moon is here in another. They're 180 degrees apart. And that's why you can see it because the light of the sun is shining on the moon. Correct. Reflecting us to earth. So that's- So for all um, the people who are listening and watching this, um, what do we have to tell tourists today? Ooh. <laughs> That's such a good one because for Taurus as well, they have been since April of 2018, the planet Uranus moved into their signs. And so normally Taurus is a very grounded sign, very embodied, very sensual. They like to be methodical and go slow. They enjoy like the quality things in life. And when Uranus entered their sign in April, 2018, Taurus has started to freak out a little bit. Like if, if you're a Taurus watching this, think about how your life has changed because they started to feel anxious. They started to feel like, I don't know, things aren't as secure as I've always experienced them. And so some of them might welcome the risk and want to start taking bigger risks or, you know, dressing differently. Um, Taurus is primarily a conservative sign. And so they want to experiment more. So mm -hmm. for us today, my message for them would be a little bit different. It would be continue to experiment, continue to um, do things that make you feel liberated. And with this month, um, in particular, your planetary ruler is Venus. And what that means is that you will start to feel um, like you're really questioning your life. You're digging so deep. So I would just say, welcome the, the change and the discomfort and the emotions that are coming with that because they're not necessarily an emotional sign and they are going to be feeling things so deeply now, especially over the next two months. Mm. Welcome. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of people, just to make it um, in full context, a lot of people obviously are feeling a lot of discomfort right now. Right. Um, nothing feels comfortable or normal, um, things feel upside down. So how would you say um, what people should do in terms of their um, chart or their sign? How would they go about, I guess, making uh, choices and decisions? Um, obviously they can contact you for a reading and um, work. you could work with them. Um, but is there a, a general kind of guideline to give someone to right. help them based on their um, chart and based on their, you know, astrological roadmap, how they navigate this discomfort? Yes. Knowing what sign we're in now is so helpful. Like you said, what sign, what sun sign are we in now? We're in Taurus season. So anyone celebrating their birthday is a Taurus and next month, um, we will, as of May 21st, I think, or the 20th of this year, it changes every year, we'll be in Gemini season. So right now, knowing that it's Taurus season, mimic what it is to be in alignment, which is to be a Taurus, which is to research Taurus, to understand, okay, if, if everyone I know has a birthday that is a Taurus right now, mm -hmm. research Taurus. Taurus is about drinking red wine, for example. Taurus is about getting massaged and we can't really do that right now. So using oil yourself, essential oils, mm. anything having to do with embodiment right now in Taurus season, like eating grounding meals, sitting down and eating. Because if you, during this kind of crisis time, if you're able to sit down and just take your time with things, you know, do your skincare slowly, take a bath, anything that has to do with the senses and slowing down and living in the present moment, is going to help you feel de-stressed. It's going to help you decompress so immensely. So mimicking what it is to be a Taurus, it doesn't matter what sign you are. Go with it. Be a Taurus. Live that lifestyle. And then when it becomes Gemini season, it's all about communication and writing and thinking. And so our mind is going to become buzzy and anxious. So less caffeine um, and writing mm. your thoughts out and um, striving for better communication and deep breathing and things that relax the nervous system. And that is such excellent advice and excellent information. I never would have thought about it that way um, before. Um, but I think people can really take away from that 
um, about taking care of yourself based on what the sun sign is now. Um, Aligning to the cycles, the natural cycles that we are, are in, you know? And it makes sense because then there's not an opposition. Then you're, there's not this conflict. You're more um, just, I don't want to say the word giving in, but you're more um, allowing alignment of what the natural cycle is. And that will, I think, just inherently and naturally make you feel more harmonious. So doing all of those very simple things, but um, very important things, mm -hmm. I think can help people a lot. Help people's nervous systems as well. I think um, with the massage oils and just having self-care is so important with natural products to help um, reduce stress, which reduces you know, the anxiety or and helps with everyone's nervous system. Completely, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I think um, it's really important to know like what's coming next too. And like you mentioned, um, you know, next month we're going into a new sign, a new sun sign. And, Obviously, um, that changes everybody and that changes the way um, the energy affects, affects you. So giving people a little bit of insight into that whole, you know, communicating better. Um, it makes sense because we're all becoming out of hibernation. I think we'll all be going back um, into the, the workforce, um, into the world slowly but surely. And um, we'll all be communicating again in person. Yeah, and we'll look doing that. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. one other tip I have too, do we have mm -hmm. time? Yeah, we do. Is to give yourself two and a half days. If you go in two and a half day increments, that is the moon cycle. So if you go in two and a half days, if you're not feeling well, let's say you're feeling moody, it's out of blue, or you feel sensitive, give yourself a day and a half, two, two and a half days total, you'll be over it. So give yourself little increments just to feel and observe how you feel every two and a half days because the moon is moving position, which means moving sign every two and a half days. It will affect your emotions in that time frame. Well, that is excellent advice to kind of wrap up <laughs> what, we, <laughs> what we've done today, what we've talked about today. I think, um, I think that's amazing. Um, I think that people... So I really want to thank you, Rose, for all your insight. I think your information has been extremely knowledgeable and insightful and helpful. And I think um, that it's really going to give people a better understanding about how astrology and people's um, astrological roadmap can help them make decisions, make them uh, make informative decisions. I hope. And how, um, you know, when you know that much about yourself, it just makes you um in a place where things don't seem so scary or so unknown and you can actually make better choices and um understand why things are what they are and if you don't like the way they are how you can improve them exactly exactly that yeah think, yeah go ahead sorry well it's just so empowering to to have that information that's why i do what i do because it's like, uh, it's just supporting people in their own path of self-discovery and empowerment. And I think it's really useful to have those tools. Yes, definitely. Um, during times like now, even, I think it's even more um, important. Yeah. Right. And, 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 more, and more empowering because when you feel like you don't know what's going to happen because this whole upheaval, I think it's really important to feel even more empowered. Yeah, you can't escape yourself. Like right now we're stuck with ourselves and we're stuck with thinking and, you know, contemplating a future we don't really know. So it's definitely right. time. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of time um, to sit with yourself mm -hmm. um, so we can use it wisely. <laughs> yeah. um, so tell me and my audience how they can get in touch with you if they're interested in um, having a reading with you please let them know what's the best way to reach out to you. Probably the first is if you'd like to read more to visit my website, rosetheodora.com because there's my bio there. There's what a reading entails and everything. Um, the work that I've done. And second would be, you can book an, an appointment there 
Uh, my calendar is there. If you have uh, specific questions, you could email me at info at rosetheodora.com. Um, and then the best way to just kind of like, if you wanted to follow me on Instagram and keep in touch, I'm always posting, you know, whether it's a full moon or tips or whatever is coming up. So really those three ways are the best way to stay in touch. What's your Instagram um, address? It's, it's at Rose Theodora underscore astrology. So I'll let everybody know all this information also on my website. And when we post um, this conversation, they'll have all the information they need. Um, and oh, and my also, podcast. Yes, oh, I was just going to say, yes, I was just going to say your podcast, you just launched. That's so exciting. Tell me a little bit about that. Uh, that is just, each episode is, is about a topic in astrology, but it's very easy to follow. It's sometimes it's personal so that you can understand like, for example, about Mercury retrograde, like I give you a personal example. So each episode is pretty short. It's like 30 minutes and it's just to make, like give people tools and to personalize it a little bit through, through listening. I love it. That's great. Well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you, Rose. It was thank really you. lovely to see you. Lovely. It was great thank having you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Can't wait to see you in person. Soon. I know. Soon, I hope. <laughs> I hope too. I think so. All right. Okay. All right. Well, take care. Be yeah. well. Oh, thank you too. Bye. Bye.